Hi everyone, I'm Zach Reinhardt, and I'm back from Japan. Uh, Japan was a lot of fun. I stayed in Tokyo, and I saw a bunch of shows. I hung out with a lot of cool people, and I did a lot, a lot of record shopping. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I picked up a bunch of vinyl and CDs and even a cassette. Uh, while I was over there and I thought some of these artists are um, kind of old or maybe just out of the kind of public mind at the moment and uh, you might not have heard of them especially if you're kind of new to Japanese music and I thought it might be cool to uh, go through what I picked out here and uh, you know maybe recommend you guys some artists or uh, just uh, show a little bit of my taste. So um, apologies if this video runs a little bit long, but I got a lot of stuff here. And the first item to uh, get out of the way here is a live cassette from Number Girl called Kiroku Series or Kiroku Series. Number Girl is a band you should know. I've definitely talked about them in reviews in the past. They uh, were in the late 90s, early 2000s, making aggressive rock and punk music, and are, in my opinion, in the like top five bands in Japanese history. I found this little cassette just sitting on the shelf at a disc union for just a few hundred yen, so I had to grab it. And uh, this is from a couple shows that were in uh, 2001, one in Osaka and one in Tokyo. And uh, 2001 is right after the release of their third album, Sapuke, which is my favorite Number Girl album. So a lot of the material on here is off of that album, though there's stuff from their prior two albums as well, and also a song that um, would appear on their fourth and final album. Uh, so this is a pretty cool little find. I haven't listened to it yet. My only cassette player is in my car. Yeah, Number Girl, Kiroku Shiris. Then we're going to dive into the CDs that I picked up while I was over there. Um, saving the vinyl for last, of course. And uh, this is a really interesting um, find here. This is Virtual Live 3 by P Model. Live at Kyodai Seibu Kodo, 1982. P-Model is a really interesting band in Japanese history because they came to prominence in the like late 70s, early 80s techno-pop uh, boom that in brought to prominence other bands like The Plastics, who we will talk about later actually, and bands who I've reviewed like Hikashu. P-Model was, on their first two albums, a pretty upbeat typical techno-pop new wave band, but as P-Model's popularity was reaching a peak and the kind of techno-pop trend was uh, reaching its critical mass, lead singer Hirasawa Susumu uh, got kind of fed up with the fame and sought to distance himself from the kind of pop atmosphere and uh, went this kind of aggressive, darker, post-punky direction on their third album, Potpourri, and from then on out. And Potpourri dropped in 1981, and this live album is from a concert in 1982, and interestingly, all of the songs are off of either Potpourri or their fourth album that I can't remember the name of off the top of my head at the moment. Um, I'll put it on screen somewhere. There are no songs on, on this track listing at all that um, are from either of P-Model's first two albums. Uh, they really abandoned that <laughs> techno-pop sound, and though their music on here definitely has a lineage to that sound still, and there's still kind of upbeat, quirky, synth-led grooves. There's a lot of brittle guitars on here, there's a lot of driving, kind of post-punky grooves, 
there's these like strained, shouted, almost screamed vocals from Hirasawa. And um, it's just a really interesting snapshot into what P model was doing in 1982 and uh, what their kind of mission statement was at the time. <laughs> and next up, we have Wow 2 by the Boredoms. Uh, Boredoms are a strange, experimental, Japanese rock band that uh, was around in the late 80s into the 90s and um, is a band you should probably know if you're into whacked out, strange, experimental Japanese rock. These guys had made quite a name for themselves and... Um, definitely got a bit of an international following as well and this is a live album i have not put this on yet so i can't really say much as to um what is on here but this was dropped in 1993 and uh is one of the few like live cds that boredom's released and um i'm sure is very strange and noisy. Then moving into a bit more recent territory, we have the first and second albums, or mini albums, or whatever you want to call them, from Midori. They are called First and Second, respectively, and uh, Midori is a fairly well known, strange jazz punk band um, that were around for a little while and then broke up. And um, while I'm not in love with their sound as much as some other people are, um, these guys were definitely really important to like me getting into the kind of music that I'm into today. And uh, these are albums that I was never able to find in America. I was never able to find somebody selling them, uh, at least physical copies. I was able to find like torrents of it and listen to it. but. Um, yeah, I saw this down at Disc Union. I thought, well, I have their other albums. I might as well complete the collection. Next, we have uh, Urusa in Japan by Afri Rampo. Afri Rampo is a two-piece, um, I don't know, weird kind of experimental rock band from Osaka, I believe. And this is an album that I have owned digitally for a while and really enjoyed. Um, but now I have a physical copy that I was able to find for pretty cheap at Disc Union used. And um, yeah, it just has some really heavy tracks on here. The opening track, Dodo Dodo, is a song that always really kind of blew my mind with just how energetic and crazy it was. You can see the album cover here is pretty wild and uh, it's a pretty reflective of the sound that is uh, on this thing. If you're not familiar with Afri Rampo, I highly suggest you check them out. Their songs are just wild, kind of unhinged and animalistic, but also very melodic and kind of pretty and there's constant like kind of wild joyous singing all over every Afri Rampo song and um, some really just great performances drums and guitar sound great on here and these girls use the blues scale like nobody I've ever heard so yeah Urusa in Japan Afri Rampo great band and this is a great record Next up we have the album uh, Drop You Vivid Colors by Luminous Orange. Luminous Orange is a indie rock band, I guess, with a little bit of a shoegazy, kind of dreamy aesthetic um, that I never really got into. They kind of slipped past my radar for a long time until their last album, Soar Kiss the Moon. Um, which I really enjoyed. I think it came out like 2015 or something. It came out fairly fairly recently. And I'd never really listened to Luminous Orange before. And I really enjoyed that album. So I saw this uh, sitting there at Disc Union while I was shopping. And I figured I'd pick it up. 
I'm not sh really sure what the kind of public opinion is on this album. This is from the kind of midpoint of their career. They've been around since the early 90s, and this album was dropped in 2002. And I haven't given it a full listen yet, but I have cracked it open, and it is uh, kind of fuzzy, somewhat shoegazy, poppy indie rock with some very smart writing. Um, if you're looking for just some very solid indie rock, if you're into bands like, hell, if you're into like Ogre You Asshole or something, um, these guys are a little bit more experimental than that. Um, not quite as uh, poppy, but in a kind of similar vein. Um, of course, these guys are a bit older. But uh, yeah, Luminous Orange, Drop You Vivid Colors. Then, for our last couple things, we're moving into even more recent territory. Uh, then, for the last couple CDs, before we get into the vinyl, we're moving into much more recent territory. We have the album Epitome by Tiala. Um, Tiala are a pretty straight up hardcore punk band um, with a little bit of a noisy edge to them and uh, this was put out on I think less than TV records or something like that um, which is a small record label that puts out some pretty solid stuff yeah less than TV it says on here and uh, yeah this thing is available on Bandcamp so definitely look this band up but I saw a physical copy and it was pretty cheap over at Tower Records and uh, I thought I'd pick it up, why not add this to my collection. This thing is pretty blistering, aggressive, and uh, in your face. And if that sounds up your alley, uh, check Tiala out. I think this is their only album and it came out, does it say on here? Um, I don't see a year. But it came out not too long ago, like in the 2010s, I'm pretty sure. And uh, yeah, Tiala, Epitome, solid record. And then for our final CDs before we get into the vinyl, um, I have some records from the uh, strange indie band Oshiri Pen Pens. I'm not even sure what the titles of these are. Um, New Me. Uh, crystal body, crystal body, and uh, this one's in kanji. I can't read that shit. Um, but uh, yeah, I saw Oshiri Pen Pen's live where I picked these albums up, and um, they are a strange, jittery kind of indie rock band that's pretty minimalist. It's just guitars, vocals, and drums. And the vocalist is pretty wild. He was like, he like vomited on stage and he was like climbing up on like the bar. All, and he was not restrained to the stage by any, by any means. And uh, yeah, so here are the album art for these three CDs that I picked up. Um, I haven't given a listen to any of these yet, but I am familiar with Ochidi Pimpin's work. And if you are looking for some just weird, whacked out indie rock music, um, you can't really go too wrong with Ochidi Pimpin's. They are a fun, strange band. <laughs> and finally, getting into the uh, vinyl, which is, I don't know, the piece de resistance. Um, I picked up the first two. Yellow Magic Orchestra albums. Yellow Magic Orchestra, the self-titled debut, and Solid State Survivor. Um, I have Solid State Survivor on CD, but this vinyl was pretty cheap, so I thought I'd pick it up. And I've never really given a listen to their debut record here, um, so I'm intrigued to uh, check that out, see how that sounds, see how their sound evolves it going into their second record, which I'm more familiar with, and which is a very solid synth pop record. Um, if you're not familiar with the Yellow Magic Orchestra, you really should be. Uh, these guys were an early electronic music uh, group, and uh, they were just very influential in early electronic music, and um, 
put out some just really solid synth pop in the 70s. So yeah, um, Yellow Magic Orchestra, classic group, absolutely essential listening, and um, check them out if you're not already into them. And next up we have the uh, fourth album from classic Japanese pop singer-songwriter Arai Yumi. Um, this is called uh, Junyon Banmei no Tsuki, or The Fourteenth Moon. And uh, I really haven't listened to this. I own her first three albums which are all very good uh, kind of early Japanese pop albums. Um, this was all back in the 70s. I think this was dropped in, I don't know if it says, but I think this was dropped in like 76, 77, somewhere around there. And um, yeah, her first three albums are all very good and are kind of considered classic. Uh, in the J-pop genre, early J-pop, pre-J-pop, I guess. I've always been a fan of her work and thought I would add this one to my collection. If you're looking for some old, uh, kind of 70s, very groovy pop to listen to, uh, I can't recommend enough checking out uh, Arayumi's uh, first three albums. Then, sticking to old J-pop, because I love my old J-pop, we have this uh, best album, um, greatest hits album, from uh, Nakamori Akina. Nakamori Akina you might recognize from my profile picture here on YouTube. Um, she was a J-pop idol singer in the 80s, and uh, I just had to pick this thing up because, well, for a few reasons. A, she's looking fly as fuck on this album cover. Come on. Look at that. And B, I just don't own any Nakamori Akina vinyl. So why not add it on? Um, this was released in 1986, it says on here. And, uh, yeah, it just has some good, solid 80s J-pop on here. I don't know every song on here, but a lot of songs on here I recognize. Sudo Motion, a very good song. Um, and uh, Shoujo A is on here. Yeah, just some, uh, some solid pop hits from Nakamori Akina. <laughs> then, uh, sticking to our old female singer theme, um, I guess. We have um, an album from Yamazaki Hako. I want to say this was like her third or fourth album or something like that. Um, I don't quite remember, but uh, yeah, she's a kind of acoustic guitar wielding singer songwriter that writes some kind of somber tunes and uh, she has a very pretty voice. And uh, you can actually find a surprising amount of her stuff here on YouTube of uh, people uploading. I know this album is entirely uploaded on YouTube. Um, but yeah, I am a fan of the kind of 70s uh, folk rock, psych folk stuff that was going on in Japan with uh, people like uh, Kaninobu Sachiko and like the Happy End crowd. And, uh, yeah, this is just more old 70s singer-songwriter acoustic goodness. And uh, I love this shit. Sticking in the 70s and 80s, um, we have the debut album of Plastics. Uh, this is Welcome Plastics. Plastics are a new wave group that uh, came up alongside, like, P-Model and such in the kind of new wave boom of the late 70s and 80s. And uh, this is a just quirky, kind of kitschy, fun record that doesn't take itself too seriously, but has some really great grooves on here, some kind of quirky riffs. And uh, yeah, it's just a fun kind of pop rock record. It's kind of proto new wave, you know, it's not quite Devo, but it is very uh, um, synth centric. And uh, yeah, Plastics, this is their debut album. It is a 
very solid release. And then we have the uh, the final solo album from Mr. Otakiechi. Otakiechi is a former member of the band Happy End, who you should know. And uh, this was his last solo album. It came out in 1984 and was the follow-up to his 1981 masterpiece, A Long Vacation, which is one of my favorite albums of all time. And um, this album is, is kind of more of the same on that front. It is poppy. It is incredibly smooth. It has a kind of sensual tone, but also a kind of playful poppiness to it. It is a very slick, well-produced pop record. And while it's not quite as diverse and uh, great as A Long Vacation is, um, it's a very solid, solid old 80s pop record and um, was a, a decent ending to his solo career. Then we have the uh, 1995 first full-length album by Seagull Screaming Kiss Her Kiss Her. It is called Give Them Back to Me. Seagull Screaming Kiss Her Kiss Her is a kind of angsty, indie rock band from the 90s. This was released in uh, 95, it says here. And though Seagull Screaming Kiss Her Kiss Her had been around for several years at this point and had dropped several EPs and mini albums or whatever you want to call them that were like 15 to 20 minutes long, this was clocking in at well over 50 minutes, their first uh, like full length record. And um, I've never been hugely into Seagull Screaming Kiss Her Kiss Her. I've heard songs, but I've never actually picked up a record until I picked this thing up and spun it a couple days ago. And this thing's kind of all over the indie rock spectrum. There's some pretty slick, uh, fairly well-produced stuff on here. Right next to some pretty lo-fi songs. There's a few acoustic tracks. Um, but really at the core of this album is just some really great riffs and grooves all over this thing. The rhythm section is really tight on here. It's got a lot of energy and aggression to it. And the guitar tone is beefy. And uh, there's just some really great catchy riffs on here with some kind of angsty female vocals. And... Um, yeah, Seagull Screaming Kiss Her Kiss Her, 90s indie rock band that is definitely worth checking out. Then, for a bit of a more modern punk experience, we have Poser Now, Poser Forever by Osaka-based punk band Bronx, who I saw live in uh, Tokyo and uh, picked up this album at their show. This was released a couple years ago, 2015, and is a just pretty solid hardcore punk album. They say that they're a skate punk band, but I don't think they give themselves quite enough credit for just how hardcore they are, because they are very screamy, very loud, very fast and aggressive. And while that skate punk kind of silliness and uh, somewhat more accessible edge is still here, uh, this is a pretty aggressive, blistering record. Um, that is a lot of fun, and these guys are on Bandcamp, so check them out, link in the description. And then finally, as a completely not Japanese release, I picked up this 12-inch single by Parliament. Parliament was a kind of psychedelic um, funk band from the 70s, uh, based out of America. They are not a Japanese band. Um, and I've always liked Parliament, and I kind of got into them because my mom was really into them, and uh, she has some good taste. And uh, this is a 12-inch single for the song Flashlight, which was, as I knew it, a like five or six minute long song, but this says it has a 10 minute, 41 second runtime. So I... Uh, I couldn't resist. I had to grab it. It was a few bucks and I listened to it and it really is they just are playing the song Flashlight but just for longer. It just kind of turns the song Flashlight into a big jam 
And uh, yeah, it's not Japanese, but I picked it up in Japan because I was curious. And uh, here it is in my hands in my record collection. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's um, my haul of CDs and vinyl and an odd cassette from Japan for my trip. I did pick up a few other records while I was there, but uh, but they're new and I'm thinking of reviewing them, so I didn't want to quite reveal them here. But uh, yeah, these are all really solid bands to check out. I don't have in any of these records any like shit bands that aren't worth listening to. Um, so if anything I said on here uh, piqued your interest, check these bands out. And um, yeah. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.